Hey everyone, welcome back. Today's episode, we're going to talk about a bit more detail. We're going to talk about centipedes. Now, I have several centipedes in my house, and uh, no, they're intentionally, I know, that seems a little out there too, Biggs, but you know, yeah, I have some intentionally. And these are probably the ones that, this is right up there with when I was keeping venomous snakes. These things here, I know some of them can pack an absolute wallop. So I actually keep these ones here. Are not ones that I generally am going to film while I'm doing rehousing. It's just the event. My attention is fully on this animal. What's so? Let's get into it a little bit deeper. All right, guys. I just had one of the craziest things happen. So yesterday. I gotta tell you the story here because I'm still not, <laughs> I'm not even fully prepared for it. I told my wife and she just freaked. But yesterday, I was rehousing some animals yesterday. This is a little Cam uh, Cameroon locality, Ethymostigmus uh, trichinopotus. And it's a smaller centipede. Uh, and it's, uh, it's not as bad as, say, a Dahani or some of those other ones. But still, I treat them all the same. Now, it's been in this little container, and it can be in here really for a long time without issue. I've had it in here since it's about three inches. It's probably about four inches now, and I thought now's the time where I'd like to be able to get it into something a little bit more permanent. Uh, uh, or something maybe even, the more thing that I'm trying to do is I can't film video for you guys in here. It's even hard to take pictures in here. When I take the lid off, the animal can move really, really quickly and be out in a flash. It could fall off a table and hurt itself. So i got to be really, really cautious in how I do it. So, here what my plan was. Animals in here temporarily. I'm using those same containers that I have many of. It's just still got a bit of mud in it from yesterday. These are a lockable lid, right? The only concern is I had the animal actually in here, and I was concerned about the size of some of these holes. Now, I thought if it can, can really compress all its legs up tight against its body, it might be able to fit through some of those holes. So I had it already at that stage. It's got a hide. It's got a water dish. It's got some nice substrate. Everything's ready to go. And I just was questioning a couple of these holes. So what did I do? I had my wife come and take a peek. And then I took it and I actually put the container inside another container. <laughs> put the lid on this one here and this one closed as well. Same problem though is if you see the size of those holes and how close it is to the lid, I was concerned that it was going to get out of that. Okay, so I was thinking, no, that's not going to work either. So we scrapped that idea. Okay, then I went and used one of the old containers that I had for when I got some spiders. Again, it had a nice little handle and stuff like that, and it was lockable. So I thought, perfect. And just to be safe, I put this container inside another container. You guys see the trap there? You see what's going on? See what's happening? See what Biggs is putting down? All right, you'll notice this container is still locked. <laughs> well, I came down this morning just to check on everybody, and the centipede was no longer in this container. I didn't even have to unlock it to check, because the centipede is right here. <laughs> he doesn't want any part of being in that container. So all these containers, every one of them, every one of these stair-like containers, they can move, and they can get through this section here. You wouldn't have thought that the animal of that size would have been strong enough to get through that. But he crawled through this lid. I'll put a couple of pictures up yesterday when I was playing around. It made me second guess and why it went inside that container. That container doesn't even have any air holes in it, but it was big enough overnight for me to check and test my theory. So that was that one. And if I go back to the old ones here, you'll see in the old ones the same situation. You know, I can get my whole hand inside that. You know, and I, even the other one, I could do the same. So a lot of these ones that are lockable, they might be lockable containers, but uh, there's no gasket or anything like that to keep these in place. So even once it's locked, I could still, now granted, I'm a, you know, full grown man. I can, you know, I could do it. I just can't see a bug that size or an arachnid that size being able to do it, but it did. So I guess we're going to have to figure out something different. I was thinking of putting it back in this one, but we had that beautiful cherry dehani. That was in this little container. And I think I'm going to put it back in here. It's got the nice ventilation on the lid. It's got nice diminutive little holes on the lid all over it. So I think that that'll work really, really well. But again, I'm back at square one where I don't really have a container where I can appreciate and enjoy the animal and, and view the animal and even shoot video of the animal for you guys. But for now, I think it's going to have to go back in here. And at least for the safety of the animal and the safety for myself and my family, I think it's better in here. 
Well, that was pretty quick and easy. It's in here, not exciting. And it's gone into its hide and it's got its water dish and hopefully it'll settle in a little bit better. And we'll have to rethink how we're going to rehouse this beautiful little centipede so we can appreciate it a little bit better. Now I'm gonna show you some of the other centipedes, a couple of the other centipedes that we've already rehoused and how we rehoused them and what we rehoused them into and why. So let's take a peek at that. All right, here's the little rehousing that we did for my cherry, uh, the, the Scolopandra Dehani. This one is that bright, bright orangey red one. It does come out at night. I don't see it currently right now. And honestly, because it's only been recently set up, I have no intentions of going in there and disturbing it whatsoever. I want it to settle in and live. Now, there's one thing that I thought about. When you, first, when you look at the container, this is a, a, is a Zilla, or our all glass Zilla Reptary, or critter cages, I think they're called. And they have a, a little thing opening here where you can put a lock if you should show choose, if you have young family and stuff like that, you don't want anybody in it. But my daughter is very, very, uh, the youngest one, Paisley, is very, very respectful of all the animals. She does not do anything, as I've mentioned, without dad. Uh, and then it does also have like the lockable lid. So to open it, you actually have to lift this and then pull the lid forward. Now, I went and installed, now I'm gonna open up just to make certain that it's not there. Okay, we're good. Now, the one thing I did is I actually installed this natural cork background. And to make it work, because the lid has a lip underneath, it actually has to slide in underneath and above this little thing here. And I had to cut the cork down slightly to be able to accommodate that fitting in there and closing. So you notice this goes down and locks against the thing so it cannot open. Now the one thing that is a negative about that, well, Big should have rethought it is, well number one is the animal can climb this. It can't climb glass, but it can definitely climb this. It could climb this and out in a second if it wanted to. And also, I've given it a recessed area where theoretically it could hide, which is probably not the best idea. But overall, you see the cage, the, the, the accoutrements in the cage are all set up. Lots of natural mosses and leaf litter, a nice big slab of oak bark. Uh, this is another piece of, there's rotten wood with some lichens growing on it and a water dish. And uh, it keeps it a little bit drier environment than what it was kept for in its deli cup. And that's trying to, to limit the, the amount of uh, moisture that's actually on the animal. The animal can find areas of higher moisture within this environment, but the animal's not in an environment that's wet. So this one's, this one's beautifully set up. And I like it, it's got a metal screen lid and it's lockable. So that's the Skelepandra Dehani. Now another one of them that we set up the same time as the Dehani is this one here. And this is my Vietnamese giant centipede. And this would be sub, uh, Scolopandra subsipinimes. And this one here is, um, it's all completely bioactive. You can see the similarities to the other one. We've got the water dish in the back corner. We've got some nice moss, nice big bark thing some leaf litter and different things, different accoutrements. We got a nice piece of lichen back there. But otherwise, it's almost identical. It's got the cork background. It doesn't have, a, this is a much larger animal than uh, than the Dehani I have currently. So the, the little space that's here, it definitely cannot reside within that space to hide. Uh, it always tends to hide. This one was in here a little bit earlier than the other one here. So I'll show you where this one tends to hide without disturbing its environment too, too much. So if I lift up its moss, well, you can't really see him right now, but he is basically right there. Yeah, you can see her a little bit. I don't want to disturb her too much. They've only been in here for about a week and a bit, so I want them to just settle in nicely on their own accord. You guys know my, my thoughts in regards to uh, handling animals, such as tarantulas and all sorts of stuff. It really doesn't serve any purpose to me. And I'm the same thing with this. Even if this animal wasn't venomous, uh, my, my, my level of respect for handling it would be about the same. It doesn't serve any purpose. So I set up these nice, nice enclosures. They're, as I say, they're fully bioactive. There are isopods in here, and there are some uh, springtails, and they, uh, they maintain the enclosure cleanliness a little bit better. And then uh, the, the, the scolopandras, both of them, have been uh, taking down isopods. So finally, as much as I love my isopods, I can finally say I do have an animal that will actually eat some of my isopods.
So I guess that made for a bit of a tense morning, but uh, that animal's now safely rehoused. You've seen some of the other animals and see how they're doing. You can see it's a lot of stuff starting to come to play. We've got stuff in almost every enclosure. Stuff's absolutely everywhere, all around behind me, and then all that stuff that's still out there in the family room. It's getting crazy. So Biggs is going to kind of go on to slow down. No new animals until we get everything all set up. And we're ready to start doing that 160, get that tank in place there. And then we're going to have a full rack there, and we're probably going to put up some stuff there. So as always, my friends, thank you kindly for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care.